Hey YouTube, Audio Olympian back with another video coming to you from the Coliseum. So today's battleground video, we are going to be talking about new subwoofer that I just happened to get in the Monolith 10 THX certified here. So if this is your first time visiting our channel, we want to welcome you. Thanks for stopping by. We'd appreciate if you could help support our channel by going and getting an old VHS tape and jamming it into that like button there, getting it stuck so that it's going to force you to have to go out to Circuit City and get a new one. Okay, so I'm here with the Monolith 10, the THX version. I guess you could call that the flagship line of the company. This one had some features that I was looking for. One, the price was really good at $499. Now this thing here is solid, it is quite heavy. I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of details on it because Joe and Tell actually does a really good in-depth video on this subwoofer here. So if you wanna find out all the details and he's got a really cool video that he makes with it, with um, showing the woofer and the excursion on it and it's blowing his kids hair and his hat off and stuff like that, it's a really cool video. I recommend going watching that if you wanna get in some more in-depth details here. I just really wanted to talk a little bit about why I got this one and what it's doing and how I feel it sits in my two channel system. This is actually a home theater sub. There is a difference on this and so we're going to talk about that here in a minute. So this thing is very hefty. It's ported here so you get maximum output but it does come with a, uh, a port enclosure so it has the, the sponge foam you can put in there if you wanted to seal this up a little bit. Now very heavy duty this is not mdf i believe this is hdf so this sub is pretty heavy here and for its size i put it up on the table here so you could see its size a little bit here with me sitting next to it so it's definitely not a small sub one thing i really really am finding out here about subs as i get a little bit more involved and in, in in tune and dial in different types of subs the bigger subs especially if they're ported even if it's a front port the bigger subs don't go, don't sound the best when you stick them over in a corner because they are going to have very, very atmospheric output performance. All subwoofers, if you go behind it while it's on plane, you can always hear, especially if it's in the corner, you can always hear that subtle reverberation off from behind it that is echoing and reflecting off of the wall. So. Even if it's not ported, and especially if it's not rear ported, you're still gonna get that sound because sound is just gonna um, expand from every area of the box, the surface, the cone, the plate, anything like that. It's gotta go somewhere, right? So the more dense and the, the higher quality they can build the cabinets, the more it keeps the sound in and it pushes it out. Okay, taking a look at the back panel here, it's pretty simple. Just like your average uh, powered subwoofer is going to be, we'll get a little bit of a closer shot here. Okay, so right here, very simple. You got your crossover control, your phase control, and then your level, which is your, your gain. And then you have a few uh, toggles over here, which is your crossover. I can turn that off and on. That's if I'm hooked up to, let's say, a processor and I'm using its internal uh, crossover in the processor so you don't want to ha have a double crossover going because then you'll actually actually uh, cancel out uh, your subwoofer on that so you don't want that to happen so it gives you the opportunity to turn it off completely instead of just turning it all the way down or up and then you have your EQ which is either extended or THX and what that refers to is if I have the port sealed up or if I have it open it's going to give you more extension. And then you have your power, which is your auto off and on. Very simple toggle. But down here, this is what was most important for me, the balanced XLR input. And the reason I was looking for that on a subwoofer was because my um, P6, my Parasound P6 preamplifier has a subwoofer output, but it also has a subwoofer XLR output. And I connected my SVS subwoofer to that output and man that made a huge difference from the RCA to the XLR on that subwoofer did anyway so I wanted to get something a little bit smaller because I didn't want to keep my uh, SVS sub here in my listening room this is for my music area 
I just wanted to get an additional subwoofer that I could put in here, but also utilize that XLR input. Also, it does come with a grill that is pretty, pretty heavy duty and good quality here. You can see this here. This is at least, geez, six, seven pound grill here. Um, it does sit away from the speaker a little bit. So when you put this on, it gives you a little bit of a gap, which is a little bit, you can might be able to see right here. I can stick my hand down in there all the way around, uh, which is a little unusual. I'm not sure if that has any effect on the sound, uh, but it does give it a little bit of a different look here uh, as far as just the appeal and the, the appearance that this has here. It does sit in very, very tight. So once you push this in, you're gonna be kind of cranking on it to get it out. But that's why it is very good solid um, framing in here. So be it allows you to really crank on it to get this out, which is a good thing because on a subwoofer that's powerful, and in this case, especially this sub here, you don't want anything that is gonna be loose or rattling on it. So let me see if I can pull it back off. Yeah, I didn't push it in very hard because I prefer to have it off when I'm listening to it. So having said that, let's talk about the sound and the sound quality of it. So a $499 subwoofer, what kind of sound can we expect from that? Well, it is very punchy. It is deep. It pushes a lot of air and it gives you very good bass sound. However, one thing I do think it's lacking is a little bit of mid bass sound, which is where you're gonna get that sound there from maybe your higher end subwoofers, anywhere maybe 900 to $1,000 and up of subwoofers that have a little bit more of mid bass sound. Mid bass is a little bit hard to explain with a subwoofer because it's not like a mid range on a speaker, which is a totally different driver than your woofer and your tweeter. But mid bass gives you a little bit more of a smoothness to your sound. So in, in an effect, it takes away some of the boominess of a, or a lot of the boominess of a subwoofer, of a powered subwoofer. So the difference is just basically in how the uh, driver is gonna be built and designed, the voice coil, the spider, you know, different things like that. Uh, the material, carbon fiber, woven, paper, whatever it is, right? All that's gonna determine if you're gonna get mid bass sound here. This to me doesn't have very great mid bass sound. The only reason I know that here is because I ha have it hooked up into my sound system for my music, my listening, my two channel system here. Whereas the subwoofers, the powered subwoofer out of my Tritons has more mid bass smoothness to it that bass is smoother than this bass here. So I wanna say for movies, this thing is excellent for explosions, depth, um, spaceships flying overhead. Uh, if you've recently watched Dune like I have and you have the sandworms coming up out of the ground, this is gonna make it seem like you are right there in the action and you're feeling every bit of that. This thing does rock and punch the way it should. However, for music, I don't think it's very musical. Uh, as I said, I can tell a difference between my uh, Triton subwoofer bass output and this subwoofer bass output. I can hear a little bit of the difference between that, so it doesn't blend very well. I do like this. I probably am gonna take this up in my main listening area so it can get some real good activity up there. Right now, I'm running my Super Sub X. I'm probably gonna bring that one down here and um, that way I'll have matching bass all across my two channel system here. However, the reason that I don't have that one down here is because it is just an RCA interconnect uh, input on that subwoofer where this one has the XLR. So lastly, I kind of wanted to give you a little bit of a comparison of one of my other subwoofers that I have in the collection that I feel is close to this here, and that is my RHEL HT1205. HT is their home theater sub. Well, REL is known for more two-channel listening subwoofers, but they did make a home theater line there, a 10-inch and a 15-inch um, speaker. I have the 12 here. You can see the cone is bigger than the monolith here. 
carbon fiber woven in there. So it's got a really good look. It's very stiff. Cone design is excellent. Box has a nice sleek look to it. And it has a very elegant glass on top here, which is not just for cosmetic appeal, but it also serves a purpose in densing the cabinet and creating more sound isolation within the cabinet here. The monolith over here, 10 inch, you can clearly see it is a much bigger design, much bigger box here. And again, 500 watts output. Now here's where some of the differences come in. This only has RCA in um, input and output, so you can connect uh, multiple subwoofers to this one. This one here again, XLR input and output along with the RCA. And I can connect multiple subwoofers uh, to this one as well. One of the benefits of the RHEL, it's a very light speaker. I can move this around here. I'm not gonna attempt to move this one because this is heavy. I wanna say just picking it up off the top of my head, close to 80 pounds, maybe a little more, maybe a little less in there, but this thing is heavy. I have it on furniture sliders so that I can slide it around my carpet to move it easily. This one, I, you can move a whole lot easier. I do appreciate that. However, it does tell me two things about the designs of the cabinet, or the design of the speaker, I should say. One, the cabinet density is obviously a different material where this is HDF. This is probably, I haven't really went into the details of this in a while, but this is probably more MDF, medium dense, uh, medium density fiber, HDF, high density fiber. So a lot heavier and a lot more sound isolating. Back here on the back panel, one of the key features that I really like about this, this rail, I'm not sure if it's all of them, but for the description of the components, they flipped it upside down so that when you're looking over top, you can read it. To me, that is a very, very cool, unique feature that I applaud RHEL for doing that because it does make it more convenient when you're looking over top and you wanna adjust some of the settings. However, as far as home theater output performance, I'm gonna have to give my thumbs up here to the monolith. This thing just does rock the house and shake the walls here. Whereas this one is more smooth. I do believe it's still designed more for music. The lightness of it also lets me know that the motor structure of the speaker is probably not as heavy duty as this one. It's got a nice stiff cone, so that means it can handle some excursion and it can output if it needs to. However, you still wanna think of, let's say an Audi versus a Tahoe. Audi is very sleek and fast and compact. However, if you need to move something, if you gotta pull something, that's where you're gonna hook up to the Tahoe that's gonna have a lot more uh, power, beefiness, more of a monster push behind it, right? So that's the differences between the two, which is why I believe the output of the monolith is a lot more higher than the same wattage of the RHEL HT 1205. Again, both operating at 500 watts. So I just wanted to give a little bit of comparison here for that to give you guys an idea of how this would match up against, let's say, some other uh, subwoofers in that kind of uh, same wattage and price point. Again, I believe this is I, $599 retail, $499. So very close into the price points. So that's about all I have for you guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.